Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolf Wilds, where things are getting a little bit prickly in our Proghorn area. The Proghorn Prairie has been flourishing. We have got babies everywhere. Just look at these little cuties. I am so in love with all of the adorable little Proghorn babies we've had, and I need to name some of them after you guys pretty soon, because I'm pretty sure we have Proghorns popping up everywhere. But uh, things are getting a little messy, and I don't just mean because everybody's playing in the mud pits all the time. I mean because we have some grown-up boys now. Some of, uh, let's see, who was, it was, oh, Sycamore, look at you. But we actually have some of Thomas's children who were born now being adults. And we have to figure out what we are going to do with our young bachelor proghorns. We can't really leave them in here because they're going to constantly fight with their dad. And we don't want them to breed with their sisters. So in the wild, what normally happens is these guys would be chased away and establish their own bachelor herd. But if we're going to have so many proghorns, I'm trying to figure out how we're going to have like that many bachelor herds scattered all over the place. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to create a beautiful new area. We're going to fill it with flowers, like the more proghorn that get to go into a zone will fill with flowers and we're going to start transforming the entire world through the animals which i really love like you know how when we have the animals poop in suhula sand safari they get to have protea flowers that sprout from the dung i think we're going to do something similar to that here but mostly with like the bachelor herds and then once the bachelor herd either becomes prey to the wolves or it just all dies off from old age, I think what we'll do is we'll take down that area and turn it into kind of like a park for people. So like right over here, I was thinking I want to one day have an area for the guest to enjoy. But for now, since we have some, some Proghorn Bachelors, I think I'm gonna put a spot right over here for the Proghorn Bachelors. And every time that they do something, We'll pop on in there and we'll put down some plants. We'll spruce it up a little bit because they exist over here. Uh, maybe if we end up with like a really five star one, we can put something fancy in here. And then once they all age out or once they all like get so old that they fall prey to the wolf packs, then we'll take down the barriers and we'll transform that into an area for people to enjoy. And sometimes if we had bachelor herds transform an area, we might have a new animal move in and we might start upgrading areas depending on what the animals are, what they're doing. Like for the buffalo, we could put down some sort of special rocks or something really pretty that represent we had this many buffalo born in this zone. So I think that would be really fun. And then uh, even in the future, if we change this into like, say, a grizzly bear habitat, we'll always have those little markers to remember at one time this land was built up by these other animals that lived here. So I'm hopeful. I'm really excited and hopeful about that. And I think it'd be really fun. We could even do things like build special feeding spots that we could say are the result of having all of the, the fertilizer and all of the ground churned over and, and constantly um, aerated by the hooves of many, many prog horns. I think that'd be fun too. So we've got a lot of cool options for those bachelor herds that don't have to involve like just making a box and throwing them in there. We can make it so they can uh, inform the changes of the land too and make it more fun for ourselves doing it that way of course too. Uh, all right but let's go ahead and we're gonna make a little bachelor spot for the prog horns because they have been having some issues. And the minimum size we need is about 4,000 square feet. So hopefully that's pretty big, but I think we'll be able to make something even like naturalistic looking, which would be fun. So let's start here. And let's shrink this down a little bit. There we go. People will have to like walk in here, but they'll like walk between here, but that'll be fine. All right, there we go. Make this big again. Go this direction and this direction. All right, how big, how big did we manage to pull this one off? Let's put down a little wooden habitat gate that would connect everything. Yeah, dangerous fights for alpha status. Uh, this is about 6,000 square feet. We might need to make this a little bigger, but we can manage. And here, we can even start blocking it off with cedar trees 
at the back because believe it or not this creates for some reason an impenetrable barrier that the proghorns will be like i cannot get past this tree oh no and so they won't try to leave and we can have a pretty little forest that we start back here i should probably be a little bit more add some more variations in Ooh, ooh, like variations like this heck yeah See, we could put something like this in here instead. What? Where'd it go? Come back. I wanted you right there. You're so beautiful. All right. I love these trees. I love this whole look. All right. And I don't think the proghorns will be able to jump this, but we'll, like, check to make sure. Uh, and we can grab more of the cedar trees and put those down. Hello, everyone. Don't worry. We'll have this all tidied up soon. All right, big old yellow cedar tree, smaller yellow cedar tree. But see, yeah, for some reason they just can't walk past these. And we're going to use that to our advantage. Also, they're still having a ton of babies, which is awesome, because we are working on that northern song special experience right now. There we go. See, now we've already got something because of the bachelors. Uh, let's see. And then at the back fence... There's different ways you can try to prevent them. I wonder if we could do... Oh, let's do a ravine! I like that idea. We'll make it bigger. And then we'll establish a bit of a ravine. See, you gotta be a little creative. And once you get a teensy pinch of that creativity in... And make it more playful while you accomplish these goals, everything just becomes more fun. And we'll do a big natural barrier... In fact, we could even we could even expand this and we could make it so that we have a natural barrier in between the pronghorn populations. So we keep a whole bunch of them in this spot, but they won't be able to get across like maybe a bridge or something that only keepers could possibly go through. Uh, and we could keep one of Thomas's best sons in here and mix him with a few new females. That's an option, but we'll we'll explore like different ways we could do that in a bit but let's have a, a i mean i don't think i've ever made like just a really cool deep ravine there we go so let's get down in here we can just make it full of rocks flatten flatten there we go just a big giant ravine we can have a big rock on the other side i mean when i said big giant ravine i i really want to see like a big giant ravine, so let's go! Down, 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 down! That's more like it. Alright, flatten to foundation. Flatten to surface, I think, is what I want. No, I want flatten to foundation. This looks like a no-go zone. This looks like a Minecraft ravine. Huh. Oh my goodness, we do need to do more things in our zoo crafting adventures, too. Trying to keep up with everything is heckin' hard, but I love it. Now I want to add in, like, more sneak areas. Ooh, like a cool, maybe a Gila monster area? I've been looking up more of the North American animals that we can add in. With excitement. Cool! So see, that makes a huge natural ravine. We could actually do... Whoops. And Rosie the antelope's about to mature. So we might also have to go ahead and roll because he's getting old. As soon as he becomes an elder, we're actually going to replace... Thomas with a new proghorn that we're going to have the rangers go ahead and adopt from another facility. All right, we don't want a connection like that. So that they will escape. But we're going to have the rangers adopt a new proghorn for genetic variation. All right, good, good. Let's get a big giant. This is fun. I've never made a ravine before. I wish we had, like, red rock. That would be really well suited. I can't wait to see, like, what expansions might come out one day for Planet Zoo. And it might have just, like, red rocks and more terrain paint that we could use. Excellent. Oh, and roses! The bison has matured! She made it to adulthood, you guys! It can be a precarious thing to do as a little bison to try to survive all the way to adulthood but she'd managed it. All right, let's get some more 
rocks. Get those nice tundra rocks. Take it. Yeah, these guys. All right. And then we can sprinkle a few of these around here. To just sort of block off the area a little bit more. Fun. Alright, hopefully they can't jump that. Pronghorn can really jump though, so we're, we might need to definitely modify this quite a bit. But for now, I'm happy with what we've got. And up along here, because we can afford it, we'll do one-way glass. And then right over here will be the only spots we really worry about putting down actual fencing. Something tells me they'll be able to like wiggle past a couple of the spots we've got. We won't know until we put them in. <laughs> All right, let's add in just by the door, wooden logs. And there we go, kind of a half naturalistic open look to our proghorn spot. Let's move some of the bachelor boys over. They can be in groups of five. So we're gonna have Sycamore, Jack and Zachary. Come on over. Look at all those babies! And they're gonna move into this habitat now. Heck! Oh, we don't know anything about proghorns? <gasps> I have been spending all of this time without researching the proghorns. And we're still waiting for baby Aaliyah to grow up, poor thing. We need more like, oh my gosh, oh my goodness. We have a lot of timber rattlesnakes as well. All right, let's go ahead and get all of those sent to the trade center. Thank you. I have so much to do. I love it. Both we'll that Gabriella needs to start researching proghorn antelopes. Maybe we'll find out. Oh no! We need another wolf vet, or we need another vet because now the little ones are sick. Okay, we need to have like a geneticist specialist. That's what I want. And we're gonna invite in another one of our wonderful patrons who without them, it would be very precarious to keep all of our adventures going. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to Colleen, who is now going to come on in and join us as we're gonna have her be a genetic specialist, Colleen. Thank you so, so much for all of your support. And it's two E's, not one E. There we go in our Patreon, and thank you so much for making it possible that we can keep all of our pixel biology adventures going. All right, let's come on in. We're gonna search for proghorn escape routes very soon here. All right, let's do this. There we go, there's that. And I do want people to be able to like, loop back around here. I think, and like go on a nice little walk right up against the barrier. I wouldn't mind that. Let's see, can I make this a little? Okay, no, that's the max length. All right, what about right here, right here, and right here, there we go. All right, let's see if these boys are capable of escaping or if this is too small. Nope, this is perfect! We did it, guys! We made a nice area. It's got plenty of space for the boys at the moment. We just need to add in more enrichment for these proghorns. So let's put in a mud bath. And we need to give them water. <laughs> That's definitely on the list of important things to give them access to. Uh, so we definitely need to give them some water. Let's see. Ooh, I like this. Yes! I am just going to have this particular rock structure down everywhere and I don't even care anymore. It's just my favorite. It just looks so good and it just so instantly builds an amazing looking naturalistic area that needs a couple more rocks to finish it off, I'll be honest. And these pines, I mean, you might think that it's a little unrealistic to have the pines growing out of these boulders. But I'm telling you guys, these are very stubborn plants. They can grow out of a lot of things you wouldn't expect. Uh, and I wonder if I can make it... Ooh, look at that. <gasps> oh, so nice. So much nicer. I think one of the things I love about Planet Zoo the most 
is all of the details really bring it to life. So you can spend quite a bit of time pecking away on some of the details. All right. Oh, that's so much nicer. We'll, we'll put that little lip together for sure. All right, we need to add in a spot where they can get water. And also if they can splash in water, that'll make them nice and clean. So let's put down a water filter unit back here that my staff will be able to reach. Power, power and water wouldn't be bad. And I think I have like those dual units. South American, start a facility built. We're good there, thank you. Faculty. I always wanna say facility instead of faculty. <laughs> Don't know why. All right, we'll put this down over here. And let's see, there we go. Okay, we need to put down smaller path. Boom. And we can just wiggle it back so that my staff can find the secret path through the rocks. They can squeeze through, they can just squeeze through, like yoink, <laughs> and come over here where they'll be able to get to work. And yes, I'm gonna put down another one of these. <laughs> Why not? It's like instant forest. We need more instant forest. It just makes it easy. Boom, 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 boom. But we'll make a few more variants of that so that we have uh, more ability to make things look nice. And we'll come up with something fun to put in for the bachelors. Here, we'll put the their food thing right over here. All right, guys. Oh, that's not a good toy enrichment for you, apparently. Oh wait, that's food enrichment. Does the mud pit not count for your toy enrichment, Proghorns? I could have sworn it would. All right, Proghorn, Proghorn. We need to start teaching people about the Proghorns too. Also, I have to say I'm kind of stunned that the wolf pups are taking so long to grow up. Oh, the grab ball is what they really like. Let's get these, yeah, let's get these boys a grab ball, why not? So they can play with it. And now they no longer have to worry about fighting. They no longer have to worry. Here, we'll make it dark green. So we can imagine they have like a little moss ball. They can just chill. They can just relax. They don't have to fight their dad all the time. They don't have to worry about being the roughest, toughest male in the area. They can literally come over and just smell the roses <laughs> with our little, ro like, little rose scent thing. How's their terrain? They want a lot more soil. We can totally solve that. And we'll try to find something cool we can put down to celebrate, like, the bachelor boys being here. Here we go. More soil back here. And then they really like having, like, long grass, so we'll mix that in as well. There we go. Oh, and they need a hard shelter, of course. Well, we'll find, we'll find something for them in the near future. And maybe occasionally we can put in like one buffalo or something in here with them. All right, excellent. Uh, the habitat is too small now for the wild prairie. Oh boy. <laughs> so now the wild prairie needs expanded too? Heck, like this area is just growing so much, you guys. But we could make it grow. Oh, we could expand. Oh, yes, I love that idea. We could expand this ravine. And make, like, that be the edge of this side. Over here. That would be fun. To just make our huge ravine expand over there. And just keep this area growing. I like the idea of trying to keep in multiple populations of different males and females, too. I think that'll be really, that'll be really tricky, but I think it'll be really fun. And let's do wooden logs there. And then we're gonna go ahead and we can have like a little walkway people can walk across the ravine on. We're gonna go ahead and do steel mesh there. Yeah, actually we could just say that this is like a walkway um, to the other side of the ravine. Oh, I like it. And we'll put stones down here and maybe make a tunnel that people can walk through. All right, that'll be excellent. And then this back area is all going to be ravine based. Down we go! Dun 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 dun! 
nice. I guess we'll have to spruce this spot up next time, but it'll be fun. There. Oh, that's actually like all we need to do because they won't be able to get past there. Here, I'm gonna expand it just a bit. All right. There you go, guys. Your wild fields just got a lot bigger. <laughs> no escaping place. Uh, whoops. And we'll grab this one. And we can actually prevent escaping like so. See, I told you guys, instant forests are fantastic. Just tuck that in there on one side. Make sure I didn't put it at the angle that literally lets them just like bounce out of here. Tuck this one in on the other side. Double check that we didn't just make a bunch of escapee zones. And ta-da! Plenty of space! Now we just have to convince people that it's worth it to walk down there. But I think it would. Like, heck, oh look, and we actually made a perfect transition to when one of the wolf pups grow up, we'll be able to move them over here. Yay! Speaking of the wolf pups growing up, I would have sworn that would happen sooner than later. So we need to check on them because I really would have thought they would have already aged up by now. I love this ravine idea. Let's grab some lizards and we'll put down a couple little lizard exhibits. And I feel like, oh, should we put something in the ravine? Like make the ravines flood? That would be pretty cool. Except then the animals could swim across it, but not if we put the water level lower like this. I love it! Now it's a moat! It's a moat ravine! That makes sense, because it's it'll be like a little river! Yeah! And we can put little frog noises down in there! Heck! Okay. Finally, getting to the point where we're starting to work with like some significant modifiers of the geography <laughs> in our Planet Zoo adventures, but we're getting there, guys! Slowly but surely, as issues come up, dangerous fighting due to Improper sex ratio. Oh, Aaliyah, you grew up. Okay, sorry, you need to be released to the wild now because you're supposed to be dead. And Moonlight, please don't interbreed with your dad. This is why, Knight, are you, are Thomas, Thomas, when are you an elder? That's gonna be unhealthy babies, Thomas. Thomas, he should be an elder soon. In which case he's about to be, um, Alia, yep, Alia, she was dead all along. <laughs> She'll be traded out to the zoo. And also, I may have overestimated how much population we needed. Oh, wait, they grew up? Oh my gosh! You guys! They actually grew up! There is about to be a plot twist happening over here, friends, because the wolf pups' parents are now elders. It is time for them to go ahead and rule the roost as the adults and the wolves matured, which means next time we're going to need to go hunting. It's all right. If you guys could, oh, look at all that mud. That was, that, what? There's so much mud everywhere. This is hilarious. If you guys could, do please leave a like for the new ravines that we have just established for our bachelor boys. How we are going to make it so that they can leave behind their own unique treasure here in our wonderful wild world. I don't know. Maybe it'll be wildflowers through the poop. We'll have to figure it out. Um, I do like just showing that whole system of the ecosystem working together. But most importantly, my friends, do please enjoy, subscribe if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, and stay curious. And I'll see you guys for the Battle of the Wolves next time. Bye bye